Content Aware Scale. Hi guys, today we will talk about the Content Aware Scale, how to change the scale of some parts of the image without affecting ours. Here we go. Let's say we have a vertical photo, like this, but we would like to make it horizontal. So we need to stretch the background behind the girl to a horizontal format. Let's see how this can be done. First, we have to unlock the background. Unblocked. And I think it's obvious to you that if we just start use free transformations, then we won't get any good results. But let's define the area in which we want to place our image. We will use the crop tool. It appears here. These are the markers. And let's now edit space like this. Let's assume that our photo will be like this, for example. Of course, with the help of a function that we are going to use now, it is impossible to stretch to infinity but it is still possible within certain limits. So, we set the area with a click. We click twice on an empty space. We have something like this. And now we choose directly the function that we will work with today. Go into Edit menu and select the Content Aware Scale. And, as you can see, this option can be invoked by Alt plus Shift plus Ctrl plus C. Chosen. Next, look at the top menu. We have such a little person icon. If you turn it on, it will mean that those areas with skin tone shouldn't be transformed. If you hover the cursor, you can see that it says protect skin tones. Therefore, by the way, this option is perfect for beach photos. But if there is not so much open body, it may not work so well, although it still can be helpful. So, we have selected the icon with a person and press the shift key. Look, I move the slider to the left, the C moves, stretches, but the girl doesn't. Well, now the mistakes appear. So let's leave this side and let's work with the other one. Let's put a little bit here. Here we can stretch it much less. But nevertheless, we manage to increase the area relative to the rest of the photo. And now let's try to fill in all the background areas that we haven't filled in automatically. To do this, we will use the well-known polygonal selection. We draw, for example, such an area here. Copy it to a new layer, Ctrl plus J. Then we apply the free transformation, Ctrl plus T, like that. And we will do the same with the other side. We select the area. To do this, we return to our main layer. Initially, we select a piece like this. So I copy again to a new layer, applying free transformation again and stretching this part and that's how we change the proportions of our photo. And at the same time, the figure of the girl couldn't have suffered at all. If I had been a little more attentive to the moment when the warp had affected her figure. And now let's see what can be done if the human figure is not so clear to the program and it cannot recognize it. If, for example, it merges with a background and there is not so much of an open body on it, in this case, there is still a way out. And for example, let's take this girl. I have already increased the space on which we will stretch the background. I did all this in the same way as in the previous case. And let's see how this operation will work here. Go into Edit, select the Content Aware Scale and stretch. And look, everything stays the same in the areas which our program defines as skin tones. But the girl's dress is already, unfortunately, starting to stretch. We cannot make the same deformation as we have done in the previous case. Cancel it all and let's go the other way. To do this, we will take the lasso tool with 5 pixel feathering so that the borders of the selected areas are soft. And let's select the figure of a girl using this tool. But it is not necessary to strive for some kind of accuracy. It's done. Now click the right mouse button and select save the selected area. We haven't done this before, but now you can remember that we can save the selected area. So we save it. Well, I won't give a complex name and click of course OK. After that we go to the channel tab. As you remember, there are three channels in the RGB system, which we can see now. And we will talk about them in our lessons. Now we are only interested in the channel that we have and go into Edit, select the Content Aware Scale, and we start moving our area. But, as you can see, nothing happens. Therefore, 
we go back and pay attention to the fact that in the top menu there is a choice of which areas to protect and there is none by default. We need to choose that we need to protect the area 1 and now we are starting our scale. And look what is going on. My background is moving, but the goal in general is unchanged. I am stretching here, literally to the very edge. Yes, of course, my background is blurring, its quality is changing, but nevertheless the figure of the goal remains unchanged. And sometimes just such an effect is needed. And after everything is already done, you need to click on this tick here. Please note that all this time it was in the channels panel. Speaking of scaling, it is impossible not to touch upon such an important operation as reducing or enlarging the image. In fact, this operation is used much more often than content-aware scale. I think you remember that when you enlarge initially small size images, pixels start to be visible very soon. Well, here, for example, they become visible quite quickly. But sometimes there is a need to enlarge an image that initially has small size and especially don't do it in a large proportion. But still, sometimes you need to enlarge the image a little and lose minimal quality. So, what can we do? You need to go to the editing menu, select preferences, select technology previous, and here it is necessary to tick enable preserve details 2.0 upscale. Previously, this option wasn't available. It appeared some time ago. Let it be turned on and click OK. And now we start to change the size. We go to the image, image size. So let's try to enlarge it. Oh well, usually in normal practice it's better not to increase it so much. So the width that corresponds to the proportions is automatically set, if we have this log in this form. Usually we have automatic or bicubic resemble. Well, it usually set like this by default. And let's look at the image quality. Well, let's take an eye here to see what image quality we will have. That is, you see that? Well, it's not very good. And now we'll try to improve this quality a little with this new feature. To do this, we should choose Preserve Details 2.0 instead of Automatic. And you see, it become a little better right away. Among other things, we have such an option as to reduce noise. Initially, you'll have this, but if you move this slider, the further you move it, the less noise you get. Yes, of course, you will not get perfect, but at least you reduce the loss of quality that occurs when you increase a low quality image. Click OK. And that's what we got. Yes, the image is far from perfect, but believe me, if you did it without this enabled function, it would be much worse. I checked it off screen. So that's the way it is. I just don't want to take up your time. And for example, if you create the effect of oil painting, in the future, then there is no need for such perfect sharpness. And for example, in this particular case, such quality will be enough for us. And of course, I want to emphasize once again, that you shouldn't use image enlargement unless it's necessary. Well, you can reduce it as much as you like. And in this case, the quality won't change. And that's all I wanted to tell you today. Let's move on to homework. The first task is this one. The second task is to use a slightly different version of this operation. And the third task, as you have already understood, of course, is to increase the size of the image. This is in addition to lesson about content-aware scale. This is another way to make the image more realistic. We will use the crop tool. Pay attention that there should be a check mark near content-aware. This option will help us fill in the necessary areas of the image with the background in the most realistic way. So we take the crop tool and stretch our image to get those proportions that we need. For example, like this. We have a tick, so click and wait for the program to process our background. This may take some time. The result is a background like this. It doesn't always give the best result, but in many cases it works well. Therefore, you can choose the way that will work best in your situation. That's it. It was Peter Romanov and AIM School. See you next time.